Hello everyone, my name is Matthias Stengel, I'm the technical support engineer for Trimble's eCognition software and today I would like to talk about chessboard segmentation. Um, the chessboard segmentation within eCognition is a very basic segmentation and it's a very fast one because it's simply cutting your image into same size squares and it doesn't use spectral information nor context information of your image to generate these objects. So let's just jump into eCognition and let's see how that looks like. So this is a project I already opened. Um, the raster file is a 7L2 image from Thailand. And we're now just simply going to go ahead and create some chessboard segmentations. So first to generate a process we have to go into the process tree, right click and choose append new and now we see the edit process window and we can choose an algorithm and we're gonna go for the chessboard segmentation we have different segmentation algorithms within the cognition but we're gonna go for chessboard segmentation now what we're gonna do is um, gonna change the object size so we want to generate larger objects uh, let's just go for 500 leave the rest as it is, default values and hit execute and this will actually generate objects with a pixel size of 500 times 500. So overall 250,000 pixels per object. And if we click into these objects they are highlighted so the red outline object is highlighted you see here in the image object information window that average brightness of each object and also length width and number of pixels you could display all features that ecognition offers here in this window i just chose these three to show you how that could look like and what you also see is the that the brightness changes so the image object information is unique to each object. So in dark areas the brightness is low and in the bright areas the, dark, uh, the brightness is high. So let's go ahead and change some settings. Uh, let's go back to this process with our chessboard segmentation. And we're simply now going to change the object size to 100 and that's going to create smaller objects so the number is also increasing and it's just one tip to know how many objects you have the number of objects is actually depicted at the bottom right corner of the window in this case we have 88 objects and when we change the object size to 100 so if we decrease the object size the number of objects will increase now after executing this algorithm with the new object size you see that we generated a smaller grid the number of pixels decreased as well per object and the total number of objects increased that all makes sense now let's even go for a smaller unit let's go for object size of 10 and now we're going to ge generate a lot of objects in this case we actually have to zoom in to see the single objects because now we only see the outlines so let's zoom in and we're gonna notice that we generate a lot of squared objects almost 200,000 the size of each object is now 100 and we have 2,000 or 200,000 objects in a next step we're now gonna include a thematic layer into our segmentation and this is very helpful uh, if you want to cut out your thematic objects this can be polygons lines and also point shape files and in this case I have a thematic layer which depicts my area of interest and I want to cut out this thematic layer and generate a single object based on this area of interest and I'm going to show you how to do that that can also be done with the chessboard segmentation and that's how I mainly use it the chessboard segmentation so we have to go into the process again 
open the process, we're going to leave the algorithm, we simply increase the object size to a very large number, so it would generate objects larger than our image. So I just add a few zeros, and then we have to say, please, yes, use my thematic layer that I've loaded into the project in the segmentation. And if we execute this, we should only have two objects, that's correct. One with inside of the area of interest and the other one outside. So the outline here that we see here of the object is actually depicting exactly the outline of the thematic layer. And this can be used as initial step for your analysis to cut out your area of interest and only focus onto the area within this object. And that's actually what I'm gonna show you in a final step. So in the next step, we only want to focus our segmentation on the object within our area of interest. So we're gonna append a new process, we're gonna use again the chessboard segmentation, you could do it with other segmentations as well. But to be consistent, we're just gonna go for chessboard segmentation here as well. And now we're gonna use change the domain. So the domain defines where we're gonna apply this algorithm. So what we did at the beginning, we just applied it on the pixel level, but now we're gonna use it in the image object level. And the level that we're gonna work on is a new level, class filter is none, that's perfect. And now in the condition, we have to define that we only want to do a segmentation within our area of interest. So, in the condition, we're going to go from feature, we're going to choose a thematic attributes feature, and we're going to create a number of overlapping thematic objects. Just double-click it, we're going to choose our thematic layer, didn't rename it, so it's thematic layer 1 by default. We're going to choose this feature to only apply the segmentation within the area of interest, so in this case it has to be 1 as value 2. And I'm going to explain it now uh, in the overview of the whole domain. So let's close this one, say OK. So how are we going to read this one, the domain? Uh, we're going to apply our chessboard segmentation, this is the algorithm, in the domain. So we're going to work on the image object level, because we want to generate a segmentation within objects. The level is new level, that's the one we created, class with those none. And the condition says, we only want to do the segmentation where our thematic layer overlaps. So it's one. Zero would be outside of our area of interest. And now, this is the domain defines where. And now we're going to change the parameter to 100. So we're going to apply the chessboard segmentation in the domain. So only in the area of interest and do a chessboard segmentation of 100. So let's hit execute and hopefully that works, that looks good. So we only generate now chessboard segmentation within our area of interest and this is actually very helpful to only focus on the area that you really want to do your analysis in. All right, so thank you very much for watching. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit and uh, learned also something new about chessboard segmentation, how to apply it. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them and we'll be happy to answer them. And here next time.